the Santa Clarita Christian Fellowship's Wednesday night Bible study. It's such an honor and a privilege for you to join us this evening. Uh, before we start into our lesson this evening, I'd like to uh, give a special shout out uh, to Pastor Harper. Uh, someone brought it to my uh, remembrance, I knew, although I knew the date. Uh, last week was 20 two years, our 22nd anniversary of working together. Uh, my family and I, we started attending SCCF in 1998 by the invitation of, of uh, Sister Willetta Beal, whose daughter and, and my oldest were at Stevenson Ranch Elementary School together. And I have been privileged to work here for uh, 22 years, not even work here, to minister here for 22 years. Uh, pastor Harper, when he became pastor at uh, the same time, he asked me to teach the Wednesday night Bible study. And I know when we started, sometimes we would have uh, three, four people in Bible study. And I was so glad to do that. And over the course of these 22 years, we've grown. I look back to some of my lessons that I taught in those early years, and I'm kind of embarrassed to what they look like. But you know what? God has been faithful. So I just wanted to say uh, thank you uh, for the opportunity to minister and to teach. Uh, there's a lot of places that the senior pastor wouldn't allow or the, uh, another minister to have the freedom and ability that I, he has afforded me here. I, I could say there's many times... I've grown tired in the work, but I've never tired of the work. So I thank you for joining in on Bible study, for being here in person when you could. I thank Pastor Harper and the uh, entire church congregation for allowing me this privilege. So it's been 22 years. I praise God, and I'm trusting him that this 22nd year will be better uh, than any year. And as long as he affords me his grace. Uh, I intend to continue doing that. Amen. So let's bow as we begin. Father God in heaven, we again thank you for this opportunity to open your word. As we open your word, thank you that you open our hearts, Lord, our minds. Lord, thank you that you prick us where we need to be touched. You soothe those areas that need to be comforted. We commit this time to you, O oh God. Thank you for dwelling in our midst, for being our teacher, our strength, and our guide. In Jesus' name, amen. Open your Bibles, please, to the book of Isaiah, chapter 43. This is our fourth lesson in our series from the book of Isaiah under the general title, Comfort and Consolation in the Midst of Chaos and Calamity. During these last three weeks, we've looked at Isaiah 40 to 42, and we said Isaiah shifted kind of in the tone of his book when he got to chapter 40, when he mentioned the comfort that God was given. Isaiah has in mind the future captivity that would come in a couple of generations uh, for Israel. They would be taken over by Babylon. And while they were going to go through trouble because of their actions, God being a merciful God still provides comfort. Tonight's lesson is entitled very simply, Out with the Old, In with the New. Out with the Old, In with the New. And, and I'm going to ask you a question as we start off. Why do we like the old? Like a good pair of shoes. They provide service and give us what we need to get by. S some of us, I, I have something I'm going to tell on myself. I, I have, I call them my affliction garments. It's some sweats. It's, it, it's a, uh, uh, they're a little old. They're a little ready. They're not for going out the house. When I put them on, it lets everybody know, I am not leaving. I have on my affliction garments. When, when I've been sick, I put on my garments. I, why? I like the old, but like a good pair of shoes. Ready? Why do we like them? Because 
It's comfortable. It's familiar. We are creatures of habit, and we can be fearful of change. That pair of shoes, that that pair of shoes on the feet, belonged to Queen Elizabeth. And and Queen Elizabeth, as much money as the old girl got, as, as the power that she has, the fashion that she has, it has been said she has essentially worn the same pair of shoes, the same style of shoe for 50 years. They're comfortable. They're familiar. She knows that she's fine in those pair of shoes. I know she's up in age, and, and you don't want anything too high. You, you don't. You still want to know this shoe is going to do me good. And sometimes because we are creatures of habit, we can be fearful of change. And we think sometimes if I got to change, if I got to go out with the old and in with the new, something must be wrong with the old. So here's a question. What gets old? Now, now some of us, I have to find that old flip phone, I have one here, same, same one. When I bought this flip phone, it served, a, it was a good phone. I got it when I, when we got a new contract with, with our cell phone carrier. Some of us, we get the new phone. I got the phone, and it was good. It did a job. It made a call. I really couldn't take, when I had to text, you had to go on the letters, and if you wanted B, you had to hit two twice, and, and it, 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 it was a little difficult, right? And, and if you think about it, this phone, it, it served a purpose. It was good when I got it. I still remember wh when I got the new phone, and all I had to do was replace the SIM card, and it took me weeks to do it because I was comfortable with this phone, and finally, my, my daughter, she grabbed it out of my hand and said, Daddy, give me your phone, and when... when when she says, Daddy, in that tone, I know I am in trouble. And she grabbed it, and, and, and she got the SIM card. She got the new phone. She took the SIM card out. Here, why? Because my youngest had said I was traveling a, a bit then, and she's, my youngest had said, well, Dad, I want to see you when I talk to you because I got an iPhone, and, and I want." she said, I want to see you. I just don't want to talk to you. See, back in the day, that was state of the art. Our, our, our lesson in Isaiah 43 really doesn't begin there. It begins in Isaiah 42. Because notice if you look at Isaiah 43, the first two words of Isaiah 43 are, but now, says the Lord, but now. Which means th th there's a change. What was the change for? What, what, what was old in Israel's life, right? First thing was always being in constant defeat. No, notice what it says in Isaiah 42. It's on the screen there, Isaiah 42, 22 and 23. It says, but this is a people robbed and plundered. All of them are snared in holes and they are hidden in prison houses. They are for prey and no one delivers, for plunder and no one says restore. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will listen and hear for the time has come. What gets old? To be plundered. To be ensnared in holes. To be hidden in prison. You, you think about it. Even in a, I'm going to use a sports analogy here. So, some of us have rooted for teams. They are perpetual losers. If they win Four, five games in a season if it's football. You say, whoo, we did good. You know you from the start of the season, you're not going to win the championship. You're in constant defeat. And Israel was in constant defeat. What else was old in their life? The, the, the second thing was repeating the cycle of sin and disobedience and punishment. Notice what it says in in the latter part of verse 24 and verse 25 of Isaiah 42, he says, For they would not walk in his ways, nor were they obedient to his law. Therefore, he has poured on him the fury of his anger, 
and the strength of battle. It has set him on fire all around. Yet he did not know, and it burned him. Yet he did not take it to heart. Think about how tragic that is. You, you, you're walking in disobedience. You're doing the same thing over. It gets old to get punished. You do something wrong. You, 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 you get punished. You get free only to do it a cycle. If you've ever read the book of Judges, there's a repeated phrase in the book of Judges that says, in that day there was no king in Israel, and every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Why? Because Israel had gotten to a cycle. They'd get a judge. God would deliver. When God delivered, then he blessed. Once he blessed, Israel sinned. What happened when Israel sinned? The, the, they got taken over by the Midianites or, or the Hittites or some other, one of them other ites in there. And then what did they do? They cried out to God. He delivered. When he delivered, then he blessed. When he blessed, then they fell. It's this repeated cycle. And see, that cycle gets sad. When you look at Isaiah 43, which is our text, look at the end of it. It says, but you have not called upon me, O Jacob, and you have been weary of me, O Israel. You have not brought me the sheep of your burnt offerings, nor have you honored me with your sacrifices. I have not caused you to serve with grain offerings, nor wearied you with incense. You have brought me no sweet cane with money, nor have you satisfied me with the fat of your sacrifices. But you have burdened me with your sins, and you have wearied me with your iniquities. See, when you go through that cycle, God says, right, you wearied me. You, you know, you, I'm tired. Think about it. When God gets to the point that, listen, I'm, I'm just tired of your foolishness. And see, sometimes we have to have the knowledge to say, you know what, I'm going out with the old. The old is done. Someone said, you got to be sick and tired of being sick and tired to do something about being sick and tired. Because if you're complacent in what you're going through, so some of you right now, you complained about your job. I hate that job. Oh, I wish I could get something else. Have you applied to someplace else? But even if you do apply to someplace else, has your attitude changed that when you do get something new, you don't pick up that old stuff and bring it in with the new? We're going to see Israel does that in a, little, in a little bit. So we'll ask a question. Ready? What's new? Like that new cell phone, like that iPhone 11 or 12 that's out there that's got the better camera that, that, that does certain little features there that's a whole lot different than the flip phone. You got that new big one. It, it does certain things. You could text better. You go online. You, you could... You could do a whole lot of stuff. See, we like new stuff. How many ever remember when you bought a new car, that new car smell that you had, and once you got it, you don't you you couldn't eat in your car. You don't want nobody to get in your car with dirty shoes. You better wipe your feet off before you get in my new car. Because look what God says. Look what God says. Isaiah 43, verse 1, it says, but now, we said there's a changeover from that sin and disobedience. But now, thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. See, see that but now is the change in tone. Like in Isaiah 40, when he says, comfort ye from, from, from that historical narrative in, in, in chapter 39, there, there's a change. See, and if you notice, it says, but, but now, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and who formed you, O Israel, God speaks to his people, as one writer says, as creator. 
God has a special and unique claim upon us because he's our creator. When men forget or reject God as creator, they fall in the most basic obligation they have to God. You are our creator. But notice he says, fear not. See, this is a command, don't fear. Fear not. If you look at, if you do a search, over 360 times in our Bible, it says, fear not, do not fear, be not be afraid. It, the only term that is used more often than fear not is praise the Lord. And most of those come from the book of Psalms. What's he saying? What's he saying? It's a command, don't fear, accompanied by a promise, I've redeemed you, I've called you. See, look, look at those new features. He's formed you, he's redeemed you, he's called you, and he says at the end of verse 1, you are mine. See, redemption has its privileges. To be redeemed is to be brought back. Now, I know I may be dating myself for some of you younger, but, but, but back in my day, when I was a little kid, we used to have something where I lived in El Paso, Texas, called s &H Green Stamps. When we moved to California, it was blue chip stamps. And what you do, you go to the grocery store, and, and whatever you spend, you got stamps. And you put them in the book, and when you got enough books, you go down to the s &H Green Stamp Redemption Center, and you could get stuff back from it. You, you would, it was almost like a discount card, what we would have now. And, and you love that. You love when you got to be, you were able to redeem those stamps. See, what happens with redemption? See, redemption... When God has purchased you back, notice what it says in Isaiah 44, verse 23. It says, sing for joy, you heavens, for the Lord has done this. Shout aloud, you earth beneath. Burst into song, you mountains, you forest, and all your trees, for the Lord has redeemed Jacob. He displays his glory in Israel. What, what, what do we know about redemption. He's the one that brought us out of spiritual slavery. When you look at the scriptures, the, the Redeemer brought an unfortunate relative out of their slavery and debt. You see that in the book of Ruth. Boaz is known as the kinsman Redeemer. He's able to, to, to buy back the land. And get everything together. See, when God calls himself our redeemer, it looks forward to the price that Jesus would pay. Look at Psalm 77, verses 14 and 15. The psalmist says, you are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the people. With your mighty arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. Look, look, look at Romans 8. The Apostle Paul writes there, What then shall we say to all these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but delivered him up for us, how shall he not freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died. Furthermore, is also risen and even is at the right hand of God who makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? The answer to all those questions is not, not an act can do it. See, God has purchased us back. Who, who's going to say anything against the people God brought back? Who's going to come in between us? Nothing. See, you, you think about it. In Galatians 3, it says Christ has redeemed us 
from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it's written, curses is every man who hangs on the tree. You get brought back. You get this new position. See, but that's only good because of the strength of the person that's backing it up. See, in Isaiah 42, verses 2 to 7, he, we'll call it the manufacturer's warranty. See, some brands speak quality. They, they, they give a warranty that may be above the industry standard. Sometimes you've seen on, on, on new cars, they'll say, you know, a uh, 100,000 mile warranty. What are they saying? Uh, up until, if it breaks between mile zero and 100,000, we, we're going to replace it. We're going to fix it. There's certain other things that we've bought, like computers. They may have a warranty. The phone has a warranty. Your refrigerator has a warranty. What are they saying when they give a warranty? That you can count on this product doing what it says, and the company says, ready? We intend to back it up. I don't care what's happening. We, we're going to back it up. You have an you, you unconditional warranty. You got a firm warranty. You got a guarantee. But, but you're going to need that guarantee. Why are you going to need it? Look what verse 2 says. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. Isaiah makes a promise with that pronouncement. Because here it is. Here's the catch. Ready? It's not a question of if you will go through the chaos and calamity, but when. Trouble is a certainty. We're going to go through difficult times. Last year was a difficult time. 2021, even though it's only 27 days, it's shaping up to be a difficult one. But everybody is going to go through difficult times. I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to say, I rebuke difficulty from coming in my life. No, no, you can rebuke it all you want, and it's going to look at you and say, boy, please. But what does it, what did Isaiah say? He, he's, he said, ready, when you pass through the waters, I'm going to be with you. Through the rivers, they're not going to overflow you. When you, when you walk through the fire, you are not going to be burned, nor the flames even touch you. See, does my faith falter because I'm experiencing difficulty? Do I throw in the towel just because it's rough? No. I I can't shrink back. One scripture says, if you shrink back in the day of adversity, then is your strength small. No, see, sometimes we read these scriptures and we read them and they don't catch us. Look at Psalm 23. I know we all know Psalm 23. But look at verse 4. Look what David writes. He says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Notice he didn't say, though I might walk through. Well, he said, no, no, no. Though I'm 
walking through the valley of the shadow of death, if he put a period there, we'd be in trouble. But he says, comma, I will fear no evil. Why are you not fearing, David? For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now, we would think of a rod, which is a stick. And the staff is the hook on the stick. Sometimes the rod is, is to hit the sheep to go back on the path. But sometimes the staff, what has God got to do with the staff? Sheep get too far. He uses that hook and come on back. Right? You would think the sheep would say, oh, why? Why why are you? No, no. What does David say? You care enough about me to not let me go astray. Because what will happen with some of us, if you know anything about sheep, a sheep is near sight. They can only see about six feet. And if they don't watch it, if the shepherd isn't watching the sheep, the, the, the sheep will just slowly go until all of a sudden he's out of sight of the shepherd. And what does the shepherd have to do? The shepherd has to drag him back to be in view. It gets even better. Look what Jesus said in Mark 13. It says, but when they arrest you, this is a Christian nation. We ain't going to arrest her. We, we, I rebuke the devil in the name of, no, 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 no. When they arrest you and deliver you up, do not worry beforehand or premeditate what you speak. Why? But whatever is given you in that hour, speak that. For it is not you who speaks, but the Holy Spirit. God will speak through you. You don't have to rehearse and get your five-point sermon outline plan. No, no. When, you, when they drag you up, when you're walking through the fire, through the flood, through the river, why is he going to be there? He's going to be there with you. In it. Notice it says John 15. Jesus says, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were, not, if you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word which I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they keep my word, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do to you for my sake, because they do not know him who sent me. Right? You're going to be hated. I know we like to be loved. I know we like to be appreciated. I, 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 I will tell you, I appreciate when, when I get the pat on the back and say, oh, you really blessed me. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. But not everybody going to pat you on the back and say, oh, you're doing such a wonderful job. Somebody going to say, I hate you. I remember the, this uh, preacher from, from many years ago, Spurgeon, in the offering, Spurgeon got an, uh, uh, someone put a note for Reverend Spurgeon. They put it in, uh, in, in the offering plate. And he got it, and he opened the note, and in the note, the note said, go to hell. Now, he preached it. Charles Spurgeon was the prince of preachers, people are called. And when he, he read that, he, he, that, next, that next night, he was doing a revival that next night, he took the note up to, to, the, uh, to the pulpit, and he said, some kind person asked me to do something. They asked me to go. They to, well, they told me to do something. They told me to go to hell. But I said, no. He said, Spurgeon said, no. But I decided I was not going to take their advice. You got hated. But guess what? You turned their hate into something positive. He preached that, that night on why I'm not going to hell. And, and, and the historical account shows that both folks got saved that night than any other night. Why? They may hate you, but they hated Jesus. 
But how many, where are the people that hated Jesus now? And where is Jesus? See, go, go, go back to Isaiah 42. See, I, Isaiah says in verses 2 through 7, in, in verse 4, he says, you're going to be honored. It says, since you were precious in my sight, you have been honored. And I have loved you. That's the second one. He says, you are honored. I've loved you. Look at verse 5. He says, I am with you. He says, fear not, for I am with you. He also says in verse 5, I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. In other words, all your descendants, I'm going to bring them back from the north, south, east, and west. Look at verse 7. It says, everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory. Isaiah says, I have formed him. Yes, I made him. You know, these are promises of God's protection all around us. You, 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 you got to know the warranty that you have. You, you're honored. I've loved you. I'm with you. I'll bring your descendants from all the points. I formed you. I made you. But see, you get it because of, ready, the manufacturer's brand. See, there's some brands you know what you're going to get when you go there. Many years ago, my, my, my family, we had gone uh, to my library convention, and it was in Washington, D.C. And I wanted to go to New York, and we got on the train and took a couple-hour ride, uh, ride up to New York City, and we stayed at the Waldorf Astoria. Now, my budget didn't say Waldorf, but, but happened to be that weekend we were there, they had a special. And we stayed at the Waldorf. And I cannot tell you how good I felt walking into the Waldorf Astoria. They, they have a clock, antique clock in the lobby. They even have a dress code for certain places in the hotel. You can't come in certain places in that hotel in your jeans or in your shorts. No, no, no. Why? Because the brand of the Waldorf Astoria said, we're not going to let any riffraff in here. You, 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 we're a high-end hotel. There's some manufacturers that you know, you, you just don't want to get the knockoff. Yeah, you can get the, the, the knockoff Michael Coors or Prada or Kate Spade down at the alley all, off of what, 11th Street and Santee there in, in, uh, in Los Angeles. But no, that's a knockoff. That's not the real thing. Whoever made it, they don't stand behind their product like the real manufacturer. Because uh, notice the brand that God has. N notice in Isaiah 43, look at verse 10. God says, you are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, nor shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. And he says in verse 12, I have declared and saved, I have proclaimed, and there was no foreign God among you. Therefore you are my witnesses, says the Lord, that I am God. Indeed, before the day was, I am he. And there is no other who can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who going to reverse it? See, God's saying, I did all this. Before me, there wasn't a God formed. There's not going to be one after me. I, I, God said, y'all my witnesses. I can deliver. Why? We just call that the sovereignty of God. See, people in Israel, they had witnessed the greatness of God. And 
if they had only remembered the great things God has done. Some of us, we're going through some stuff right now, and we, we've got a case of dementia right now. Some of us have forgotten how God protected you in days past. How he supplied a need in days past. How he has, he's done some things and you got to stop and just say, oh my God, look at God. See, idol worshipers have nothing to say. Because their God haven't done anything. You got to prop him up. See, what, what, what does Deuteronomy 32 say? Verse 39 of Deuteronomy 32 says, Now see that, I, even I am he, and there's no God besides me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Nor is there anyone who can deliver out of my hand. God's sovereignty is wrapped up in his superiority. He's at the top of the chart. And all others really can't complain about what he's done. See, essentially, that, that's the response God gives to Job when Job says, well, how, you know, oh, if I could, if I could put God on trial, if I could take, put him on trial, what you going to say? See, notice what Isaiah 45 says. Verse 5, it says, I am the Lord. And there's no other, there is no God besides me. I will gird you, though you have not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun to the setting, there is none besides me. I am the Lord. There is nobody else. There's no other. You know, and sometimes when we, God does some things, and I'm going to tell you, we don't like it. It, some people, it causes them to question God. Where was God when such and such happened? These past few years when we've had shootings inside churches or at school, you know, the question always is, where was God? Well, you know where God was? He was on the throne where he always was, where he always is, and where he will always be. And sometimes Stay with me now. Stay with me now. In his sovereignty, he's going to do some things that you don't understand. Think of it sometimes like an old school parent. Sometimes, as I, at least my parents, they would give you a no. And the no was not an invitation to debate. The no was a no. Final. Why? Because in that household, they had sovereign authority. And, and, and one or two times, we made the mistake of asking my mother. And she said no. So we're going to pull a fast one. And go ask my father. But my father was smart enough to say, go ask your mother. And if we said, but mom said no, he said, then the answer is no. Why? Because number one, there was a unity with them, but there was also a sovereignty. God is the same way. He says, I am the Lord, and there is no other. There's no God besides me. Forget about thinking about somebody else. He has sovereignty. But combined with his sovereignty, ready, is his ability. Skip down to verse 18 of Isaiah 43. He says in verse 18, he, he says, Do not remember the former things 
nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people I have formed for myself. They shall declare my praise. See, what is God saying? When you trust me, you can forget the former stuff because God's going to do a new thing. See, if they got stuck in the cycle of failure and sin and discouragement, they'll never go forward in the new thing. See, sometimes, even though God says, I'm going to do a new thing, now it's going to spring forth. We want the old thing. We want to be just like Queen Elizabeth and the shoe. The shoe may wear out, but I want the same one. See, how many of us, we want the old way. Why? Because the old way was comfortable. It was familiar. And we knew what was going to happen. See, too many of us want God to do something new. But we want it to look just like the old stuff. And God says, ready? That's not going to work. I had a friend who had, his teeth were bad. Disease and unca they were unca they were bad at he got a job, and one of the benefits of his job was he got dental insurance. And he got dental insurance, and he went to the dentist. And the dentist said, sir, your, 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 your teeth are bad. We're going to have to pull them, and we're going to have to give you dentures. Now, the whole time, he knew his teeth were bad, and so he would, he would talk, but he would make sure that his lips covered his teeth and he wouldn't give you a good smile because he was embarrassed of his teeth. And the dentist said, I could get, we, we, we could give you some teeth, but we can make them a little jagged and, and, and kind of duplicate in some areas what your current teeth are. If, if, and he said, no, 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 no. Those teeth are jacked up. And when he got his new teeth, that man could not quit. So how you doing? Why? He was proud of that new. God wants to do a new thing. He is able to do a new thing. But what holds him back? is that we want the old thing. We want the old way. Oh, God, you, we've got our program. You have got to adhere to the program because that's how we know it's going to work. If we don't do this, God must not be in the building. And so many have missed it. You're going to miss it when you start looking for God to do it the old way, and he wants to do something new. How do we know that? 2 Corinthians 5, 17, we know the scripture. Therefore, the apostle Paul writes, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You, you, the person becomes new. Yeah, you still in this old body, but you got a new spirit. We call it being born again. You, you start over fresh. Gets even better. Look at Revelation 21, verses 4 through 6. It says, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. And he who sat on the throne said, behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, write, 
for these words are faithful and true. And he said to me, it's done. I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He makes creation new. I'm making everything new. But the good thing about the new stuff is remember we said earlier in verse 1, we says, fear not, for I have redeemed you. He, he ends Isaiah 43, look at verse 25. By talking about the redemption of God, he says, I, even I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. Put me in remembrance. Let us contend together. State your case that you may be acquitted. See, one of God's great abilities, as we read in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, is, is to forgive and to make a new start. And God invites us to remind him of his ability. Notice verse 26. Put me in remembrance. Let's contend together. Let, let, let's argue this case. But when I come, I don't come saying, okay, God, you know what? I was the best thing since, you know, I was born on Resurrection Sunday. I never knew what it was like to be out in the world. God, you saved me when I was four, and you called me into your ministry when I was four and a half. And I've been on the radio. You know, no, no, when I call, when I come to him talking about everything I did, I'm in trouble. See, like, 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 like a defendant in court. You messed up. You did it. You guilty. Smart person is when you're guilty, you come and say, I'm, I'm throwing myself right now on the mercy of the court. You know, so, sometimes we have taken an overdose of stupid pills sometimes and just so, done something. I said, I, I remember one person, he came, he came to court and he said, you know, it's, Your Honor, I'm sorry, I wasn't raised like that. His mother was sitting in the back of the courtroom just quietly crying because her baby was going, he was going to go to jail. And he said, I, I wasn't raised like that. I, I messed up. And you know what the wonderful thing about our God is even when we messed up, he takes us back. Because notice what it says in, in 1 Peter 1 verses 18 and 19, Peter writes there, he says, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold from your aimless conduct received by the traditions of your father, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. When I go unto God, when I contend with God, when I argue with God, you know what I'm coming in saying? I'm saying, come on, Jesus, come with me. Come with me. You know, sometimes all of us need a little bit of backup. When I contend, I, I want somebody who know the judge that could plead my case. Because notice what it says in Revelation 5, starting at verse 9. It says, the scene is in heaven. And, it said, and they sang a new song saying, you are worthy, O Lord. You are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals. For you were slain and have redeemed us from God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests for our God and we shall reign on the earth. How, how, how do I get it? See, I come in on Jesus' coattails. I don't come in, this is Cornell Winston, coming to the throne of, of heaven. No, 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 and like Jesus. Hook a brother up. Hook a brother up. He don't know me. Well, he know me, but he know what I did. You know, when we talk about out with the old and in with the now, I'm, I'm out trying to do things on my own. I told this story before I tell again. I, I will never forget. I will never forget. I was asked to go to the hospital to visit the, the stepfather 
this individual and 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 the person was in ICU there at Kaiser and 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 person asked me, she said, you know, I don't know if he's saved or not. I don't, I don't know what his relationship with Jesus is. Can you go? I said, of course, of course. And I went down to Kaiser and, and, and they let me, I identified myself and then they let me go in. And the individual was hooked up with machines and chains. And, and when I came in, I said, okay, this is business because I, you're an ICU. I don't know how much time you got left. So, so I, I, I can't beat around the bush. Do you know Jesus? You, 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 you sitting here in ICU, so you're a candidate for, do you know, and I will never forget, you know, we communicated, I grabbed his hand, and I just said, if, if, you, if, if you'd like me to let, invite, uh, introduce you to Jesus, just squeeze my hand, and, and we, we did, we, we communicated by just him squeezing. But I'll never forget, he passed away a few days after we had left, and I'll never go, forget going to the funeral. Getting to the funeral, and, and when I pulled into the mortuary, there was nobody there. And I thought I had gotten the wrong day or the wrong time. And I went inside the mortuary, and, and I knew the mortician, and, and I asked Mr. Wade, you know, he said, I don't know, it's scheduled for 10 o'clock, whatever it was. And, and I was a little early. He said, can you be a pallbearer? I said, I just, I don't know him. I just... And I'll never forget during the service, first song they were saying, was Frank Sinatra's I Did It My Way. And I thought that was one of the saddest things because you did it your way and you don't even have six people that care about you enough to come to your funeral. You don't... You're dying early. A life full of potential, wasted. See, why? Because you like the old. But even today, you know, I'm glad our God does things new. He brings things new. When we look at the possibilities that's all around us, think about what God can do in your life when you work with him. When God does something, he does it great. But you don't get the new when you want to hold on to the old. That's why he gives an invitation. Come on to me, and I'll give you rest. He, he gives invitation. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly. See, you let somebody else carry the load. And really, that's the message of Isaiah, that there's a sovereign God who has ability, and in that, he redeems. Amen. I'm going to stop there. Next week, next week's lesson is from Isaiah 44. And it's going to ask the question, does God have competitors? So I, I look forward to you joining us again next week. If you get a chance, read Isaiah 44 uh, before the lesson. We, we've pulled out some scriptures from there already during the course of this study, but we're going to study in depth Isaiah 44. We invite you to do that. As I always say, if you'd like a copy of the PowerPoint presentation, please email me at cornell.h.winston at gmail.com, and I'll be glad to send it to you. Also, as we always say, our, our Bible study is online Wednesday night. Uh, we look forward to we thank I thank you for joining us either this Wednesday or whenever you may be able to access it. I know the, the beauty about uh, YouTube and Facebook. Whenever 
you get a chance sometimes. I know Wednesday night at 7.30 doesn't work for everybody. Some of you watch it Thursday morning or even Sunday. I've had people let me know. So I, whenever you access it, I just thank God that you're able to access it and that you could grow in the Lord and study along with us. So again, thank you. As I said when we started, thank you for allowing me this privilege. I, I, I thoroughly enjoy putting this together and teaching. And I, I would tell you, hard part, though, is that God deals with me first before he deals with you. So I, I get a double dose because not only do I have to study and prepare, then I have to deliver it, and then I watch it again because now I'm watching it like you are as a participant rather than as a teacher. And I still don't realize some of the things I've said after they've come out my mouth. I say, oh, Lord. Ooh, thank you thank you that the Holy Spirit is there right with us. So again, God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Let's pray and we'll be dismissed. Father God, thank you for this another chance, privilege, and opportunity we have to open your word. Lord, thank you that you make all things new. Lord, thank you how you're going to do and you're continuing to do a new thing. And even though that new thing may be scary to us at times, Lord God, I thank you that you hold our hands, even as the psalmist says, when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. When we go through the fire, you're with us. Through the flood, you're with us. Through the river. God, wherever we, we may be, you are right there with us. And you will stay with us, oh God. Lord, strengthen each and every one that's viewing. Return this time back to them again. Lord, thank you. That even globally, as the things that we're going through right now, God, we thank you. As the psalmist says, a thousand may fall by thy right side, ten thousand is left, but it shall not come thy me. Thank you, Lord, for your shield of protection around each and every one of us. Lord, those that may not know you, let them invite you into their heart. Those of us who are saved, Lord, Help us to enjoy our salvation. Help us, oh God, to get the benefits of being in your family. Strengthen this church. Be with Pastor Harper. Give him wisdom as he continues to lead this congregation. Lord, for each and every one that may be going through a hard time right now, Lord, we thank you that you hold us, you keep us in your mighty care. We love you. We bless you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. God keep you. God make his face shine upon you. Lord willing, we'll see you next week.